What's up, YouTube? Welcome to the Hot Sauce. This is Angel Planell, a registered dietitian nutritionist in Seattle, Washington. I just cracked 100 subscribers, and the goal is to make it to 250. So do me a solid and like, comment, and subscribe, and let's get right into it. Today, we are going to feature Milton Stokes, a registered dietitian nutritionist that resides in Farmington, Connecticut, right outside of Hartford. All right. Welcome back to the hot sauce. Today, we're going to feature Milton Stokes. He's one of the dietitians in the field, and uh, I'm going to allow him to take the hot seat here. Oh, there's not really a hot seat, but you know, <laughs> this is the hot sauce. So um, I guess, yeah, Milton, thank you for coming on today. I guess let's start off by introducing yourself and your journey into the profession. What inspired you to uh, become a dietitian? What did you do for college or internship? And what is your you know, current job and what jobs have you done throughout the years? Great. Thanks. Thanks, Angel. I appreciate the opportunity. It's nice to see you again and nice to be able to catch up with you. I appreciate sharing my story. So I'm motivated by my purpose, which is advancing health and nutrition. And I think about all my roles through through that lens, whether it's gainful employment, consulting, you know, volunteerism, whatever it is that I'm going to be using my time in some professional capacity will that time will that activity <clears throat> advance health and nutrition so that's the main question for me and i'm a questions person i love asking questions so that i can understand people and problems and processes as deeply as possible so that's just a couple of things right off the bat about me i think of myself as a dietitian communicator and right now i'm working primarily for myself I've had a consulting practice for over 20 years, and I've expanded that practice and contracted it based on uh, other things going on in my life. If I've had a full-time job, then the consulting tends to uh, be contracted. And if I'm you know, not working full-time, then I expand the consulting. And that's really what I've done over the last year or so. And right now I'm, I'm supporting uh, Porto Novelli. It's a public relations agency. I'm a contractor for them and I help support a couple of their clients with nutrition communication and health communication. I'm doing something a little bit differently that's that's not so much communication focused, although it is now that I say that out loud. I'm supporting <laughs> Compass Group, uh, their brand Touchpoint. I'm helping uh, the talent acquisition team with recruitment, which is something that I've you know uh, been enjoying for about six months or so. And, and even though I said it's not communication focused, actually it's really entirely communication focused because I have lots of conversations with potential uh, applicants and trying to source candidates for their open roles, uh, the open roles that Touchpoint has around the US. Um, and then I've been working a little bit with some commodity clients and uh, have some CPG work that's coming up so um, that's a that's a bit of a snapshot. D the gist of the way to think about me and my work is it's uh, focused on strategic communication. Um, yeah, in, in terms of my career, you know, I've kind of enjoyed all sorts of roles. I've worked in clinical nutrition. I've been a clinical manager. I was a writer writing freelance about food nutrition, food science. I was a professor of food nutrition. I directed a dietetic internship. I owned a private nutrition practice and um, for the last eight years, I've really, uh, I've been in communication, but it's been more agriculture focused at the intersection of food, ag and nutrition, communicating about the challenges that growers and farmers face and then helping stakeholders understand what are some of the tools that growers and farmers need to meet those challenges. So I've been uh, a storyteller and a communicator. That really is how I think about myself. Perfect. Yeah, that that is kind of uh, that's why you're perfect for this because it's kind of like you've done. <clears throat> you you ran through the list, and I mean, it's a lot of boxes that you check here. So it's pretty pretty awesome to see. Um, I I left off a couple of things. You know, I, I just remembered I I also owned a restaurant for a decade. So you know, it's, when you said checking boxes, it made me think. Okay, clinical food service community. Yes, yes, yes. I've done all those things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you've done a wide, wide variety of things. So next question for you. So you've you've written books. You've done media media articles. You're you're clearly a good communicator. You enjoy telling stories. What would you say has been the most humbling 
aspect and what has been the most enlightening, you know, aspects of, of being a communicator? What would you say? Oh, gosh, the most humbling um, probably is an example of, of a time when I thought I knew I was right and I wasn't. I mean, I can't think of anything more humbling than being corrected or being wrong. Um, and so I'm, I'm, you know, I've been around the while, been around the block and haven't always been right about everything. Um, just thinking about uh, fads and trends in terms of food, nutrition and health. So that's probably uh, an example of when I've been humbled, when I've been enlightened. Uh, when I was like an academy spokesperson back in the 2005, 2008 range, I got to work with some amazing communicators, people who were um, beyond awesome in their skills and abilities. And I learned so much from them. And, and that was definitely an enlightening experience for sure. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's a, it's an amazing program. I can never, I think everyone that's been through it, everyone that's in it is like, wow, this is an amazing, amazing group of people that, that we all share similar passions and just, uh, uh, charisma. You're like, oh my God, these people are all rock stars. And then they look at you like you're a rock star. And I'm just like, I'm just a, like, I, I always say, you know, people are like, oh, you're, you're special. And I was like, no, I'm just a dude that's having a good time. And I'm just thankful that, you know, I'm getting to do what we do. So, yeah. <laughs> I, I agree with you. I, I felt like I was just this normal person around all these amazing communicators who, um, you know, could take the hot seat and uh, experience the demands of the training. And, and they made it look so simple and easy. And, and uh, for sure, that was uh, enlightening for me to experience yeah. being in their company, yeah. learning from them. Yes, exactly. Exactly. I'm like, oh, I like the way they say that. And yeah. I like the way they say that. Uh, like, you know, for example, like Leslie Bonsi is like, uh, you know, she just constantly spitting out little things that you're like, oh my God, like, ow. Everything so, she says is a takeaway. Every, everything yes. is a bullet point that you want to like remember and you'll use it again for sure. Exactly. Exactly. Well, cool. So next question is a little weird. I, I kind of asked this question <clears> and I've asked it to multiple people and and I feel like it's kind of a interesting question, almost a stupid question, not a throwaway question, but I'm going to ask it anyway, okay. is, you know, if you could do it all over again, what would you change or what would you, and what would you keep the same? Well, I, gosh, what would I change? I was recently talking with a, a nutrition student and one thing that I told her that I would have changed is I would have taken an extra year in college. So when I went to school in the late 90s, um, I got through, I went through the program in four years, but gosh, there was so many classes and it was rushed and I took summer courses. I often think what would have happened if I spent an extra year in college and taken maybe a few more business courses or taking a few more, I don't know, counseling or social science courses other things that, that might have helped round me out as a, as a future dietitian. And back then the price of tuition was so inexpensive. I mean, I'll tell you how, I'll tell you how inexpensive it was. It was about $900 a semester. <clears throat> I'm not wow. 5,000 years old. Um, this yeah. was in 95 to 1999. I went to a state school in Kentucky and, and there were semesters where my books actually cost more than the tuition. But anyway, um, that's, that's one thing I would, have, I would do differently. Another thing that I often think about is I love libraries. I love information. I love, as I told you, I love asking questions. I think I would have, if I could go back, I would get a library science degree and try and figure out how to merge, you know, my background in health, food, nutrition, and science with library and, and maybe be a research librarian. Um, so, so that's a couple of ways how I might, might change things. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Great. Well, thank you for that. Uh, I <laughs> sure. think a lot of us, well, yeah. a lot of us might say that, you know, sometimes it, um, it's easy to Monday morning quarterback or looking back in hindsight and thinking about things, but I think all of us have our own unique stories, our own unique journeys. And, you know, I like, I ended up getting a, a 
dual bachelor's in exercise sports science and psychology. And I felt the psychology background definitely uh, right. encompasses some of the counseling that, that helps to communicate to people. You know, at least you're able to try to get into a person's mindset and understand what's going on. And, you know, ulti- I, I originally wanted to be a sports di- uh, sports psychologist. That's what I wanted okay. to go. Go get a PhD in sports psychology, but life gets in the way and it's no big deal. I don't regret anything, but it's kind of like, you know, the uh, well-rounded aspect or whatever. And it's interesting to hear, you know, the research you do like information. So it's good to see that this is probably something that aligns. So, yeah. Well, thank you for that answer. Uh, next question for you. What does the future hold for you? Like what I, I know you recently you've been changing around everyone and you recently moved back to the Northeast. Like, well, what's, yeah. what's the future yeah. holding for you? Yes. Yeah, so we were in St. Louis for about seven years and um, my husband is from Connecticut. Our kids were born here in Connecticut. So we wanted to be closer to family and, and our kids uh, help them to be closer to their cousins. So that was a big part of why we moved moved back. But also we just like it up here. The weather's great. It's fall right now. Um, it's uh, it's just a nice place to be. But oh gosh, what's in my future? Um, I can only hope that it comprises joy, contentment, happiness, fulfillment. If I've got those, one or more of those, then I guess everything else is going to fall into place. Um, you know, <laughs> I, I, I wish I had a crystal ball. But, um, you know, I, in terms of my career, I will probably be focusing on something in communication. I am talking with a couple of companies about the possibility of creating roles in in communication and public affairs and stakeholder engagement, which is what I've been working on the last seven years or so anyway. And so uh, the possibility to bring that to an ingredients company, um, that that could be in my future i'm having discussions around that i could still be working for myself uh i could work for someone else i'm i'm open to the possibility like to evaluate whatever may come my way but if i can just be happy and and my kids happy too my family happy and fulfilled and content that's that's what i hope my future comprises absolutely that's a beautiful thing right there that's a beautiful thing so (laughs) yeah so yeah, the, the final question for you, what, do you have any words of wisdom for the next generation of, you know, future registered dietitian, nutrition, or students that want to get into the food and nutrition world? Yes. Well, the first thing I have to say is ask lots of questions because I've told you now a couple of times that and that's what I like to do. And I think that it um, is a helpful tool. I remember hearing dietitian Sherry Bork say at a conference once that, asking questions. The question is, is the number one tool in life. And, and I wrote that down along with a lot of other things she said, but I still, I still have that piece of paper from like 10 years ago and I carry it with me in, uh, in a binder <clears throat> because it, it feels like a nice invitation to me personally to go ahead and, and say what I'm thinking and ask for what I need and ask for what I want. And I encourage other people to do the same. I remember when I was 23 years old and coming out of my internship, I felt like I needed to just hurry up and take a job and and try and mold myself into what the employer was looking for. And now, after having done this for 20 plus years, you know, been out working and had a lot of experience and a lot of opportunities to practice and a lot of opportunities to fail. I think I would advise people to be themselves more and be your authentic self and bring that to the interview if you can, whatever that looks like. Um, That should, could, may help set you up for a more satisfied um, career employment experience. Um, So just be yourself. That's, That's one thing I would say in addition to asking questions. And um, be open to possibilities. There are just so many things that could come your way, whether it's with employment or with volunteerism through the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, as you know very well, Angel. There's so many opportunities that could um, give people experience, but then also open more doors and you can meet more people and um, who knows where, where you might end up. So asking questions, be your authentic self and um, 
uh, be open to possibilities. Those are three things that come to mind immediately. Awesome. Appreciate that. Well, I greatly appreciate your time. You are, you know, one of the, one of the people that I've seen around for a long time and it's always good to connect with people and, you know, COVID yeah. has been interesting. So I greatly appreciate all your time and all your efforts being a past media spokesperson and, you know, everything you're doing. And I wish you the best of luck. I'm also on the platform Buy Me A Coffee. This is a platform that allows creators like myself to create content and get rewarded in their, a variety of payments. I've decided to do it via coffee. So if you'd like to buy me a coffee, you can do so. And if you want to send one to the uh, individual I'm interviewing, send it to me and I will send it their way. With that being said, thank you very much for being here with us today. I hope you really enjoyed the video and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye.